Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Still With Me, Ionis. So our next meeting will focus on the discussion of how to be a professional sworn translator. Right, so I want you to focus on the PowerPoint that I have already shared and we discuss on how to register to be the sworn translator. So in Indonesia, there is a term called penerjemah tersumpah or sworn translation and penerjemah non tersumpah atau uh, non sworn translator. Sorry, I got a mistake. So I said that penerjemah tersumpah is sworn translator and penerjemah non tersumpah is non sworn translator. So sworn translator are certified translators. They registered to the country to have a test and then to be a certified translator and they join the test and if they pass the government of Indonesia will give them certificate and that certificate is the key or the clue to be the sworn translator here is the steps here are the steps <laughs> my grammar is bad sorry so when you want to become a sworn translator jika anda ingin menjadi penerjemah tersumpah the first thing that you need to do is to register to the government to join the test yeah as a participant they usually um, i say usually but it's not always the government will have a test of the sworn translator once a year that's it so certified translator you get a legal you get a legal document sorry you get a legal certification from the government uh, as a translator so you are legal you are a translator and you are legal so we call you as a legal translator or sworn translation sorry sworn translator and the test is in terms of the very formal test held by the government of Indonesia and the content of the test is including sorry the content of the test includes ESP or English for specific purpose it can be English for business English for management English for banking English for education and so on and so on and then you you your focus is on studying before you have a test your focus is on studying on the content and then vocabulary building context analysis and grammar so before the test you need to study hard of course you need to have a specific strategy on how to translate yeah and then the first step that you need to learn is learning the theory, the theory of translation, including content, context analysis, grammar, and so on, as well as vocabulary building, I think. So before we go on uh, the explanation on how to register as a sworn translator, I'm going to go to the next slide and I'm going to explain about the use of translation app or application. So. We have two terms in translation era, not era but area. The first is manual translation, the second is machine translation. That was like the prota binar that we had last week. Yeah, so we have manual translation and we have machine translation. The question is, are we allowed to use translation app? Of course, yes. Apakah kita dibolehkan sih pakai aplikasi translation? Yes, of course, yes. Because now we are living in the very modern era 4.0. And you know, translation app is everywhere around us. We cannot we cannot avoid of how to use translation app. For example, if you want to be a translator and you are being a translator. And then you have many orders from people that need translation. That is translation. It's hard for you to only use the manual translation. You need the translation app to help you. For example, at least you have an online dictionary. So dictionaries is really important for you to be used to for or to search for the vocabulary or the word. We go back to the question, are we allowed to use translation app? Yes. We are allowed. You are suggested to use any translation app you can find. 
Other than dictionaries, we also have Google Translation, which is a very popular translation app. And then it is free of charge. And Google Translation can help you to translate the word. It's like a sponge. The brain is like the sponge. So it's this app is very smart. <laughs> yeah, even smarter than me, I think. So the use of Google Translation is allowed, but... But you need to remember that when you use the translation app, the application will record your word, and that's the content of the confid. Oh, sorry, the content of confidentiality of the product of the product of the author is not really secret anymore. I repeat once again. I'm sorry, I messed up. So when you use the Google Translation, remember that the result of the word, when you process the word, Google Translation will record it. So that's the, the word or the paragraph that you translate is no longer secret. For example, Anda menerjemah karya seseorang yang karya itu seharusnya dirahasiakan. Yeah, it's because confidentiality karena urusannya dengan uh, rahasia atau dengan hak cipta misalkan but then you use a google translation app to help you maka google translate akan merekam hasil atau akan merekam teks yang anda terjemah dan itu menjadi tidak rahasia kadang the author cannot agree with this kadang uh, penulisnya tidak setuju dengan ini karena mereka merasa bahwa itu rahasia karya yang belum dipublikasikan uh, so you need to be very careful that's one of the challenging or one of the challenge of using google translation itu challenge-nya kalau pakai google translation in the theory of translation there are some steps that you need to go through them the first is word processing So when you process the words from source language into the target language and then the second is grammar correction or grammar check after you process the whole sentences or paragraphs you need to check the grammar using uh, some apps any apps you can use grammarly grammarly anyway grammarly can be either free of charge or paid it depends on the types and then after you check the grammar the last step is called post editing post editing is the process that you need to go through it and then i will suggest you to use manual post editing Because you need your brain and your knowledge, your ability, your capability, your skill to state whether this translation is right or wrong. So, you can use the app or a translation app at the first phase or the, at the first stage or at the first step that is word processing. You can also use translation app grammar to check the grammar and to check the grammar correction but for the post editing please 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 use your own skill so you need to improve your skill by doing post editing by yourself you need to use your brain not the app jadi bener enggak ya translation itu tergantung pengetahuan anda The problem is that not everyone can do post editing by her or himself. It really depends on how much knowledge they have or how master they are in the translation theory, especially if it deals with English for specific purpose. So, when you are hard to have a post editing by yourself, take a look for example you are a novice pemula and you are not a translator yet belum menjadi penerjemah and then it's hard for you to have a post editing by yourself you can have a peer post editing peer post editing is the process when you post or when you finalize finalize <laughs> when you make it the final decision or final editing And then you use another expert as a peer 
or as a co-worker because you cannot do it by yourself alone so you need a partner to work together to have a post editing ya karena kalau word processing itu bisa pakai aplikasi grammar correction you can also use a translation app sorry grammar app but for post editing you only use your brain not the app that's it that's the problem so that's why when people have a translation agency kalau orang bikin agensi penerjemahan itu biasanya anggotanya tidak satu at least two or it can be more and a lot and more and a lot because you need a person to process on the word processing and then to use a translation app you need the person to have a grammar correction but you still also need another person to have a post editing like this is not a this is not a promotion but this is just a sample so don't take it personally i have brilliant as my partner uh he's in the fifth semester he's in your class translation student so brilliant and i work together for the translation process and brilliant's rule i can say brilliant not brilliant <laughs> brilliant is like the english word but that's okay brilliant's rule is to have the word processing using tool and to check the grammar and me as the final person to have a post editing because brilliant cannot work by himself alone he doesn't have any mastery yet or he is not a master yet in post editing because he doesn't know the theory yet all so he needs me to have a post editing that's why when we collaborate as a translators when someone for example is coming to us to have a translation result i give the word processing to him to brilliant uh and then he will process the word and then he will check the grammar by using grammarly and after that he send the result of the word processing and grammar correction to me and i will have a final editing that's a post editing before i send it all the product back to the order that's it so i do encourage you all to have a translation agency because this is a very good job in the future if you want to be a translator you can go to the app and then you can make a flyer and then you can promote and mark yourself or market yourself to be a translator so you can ask brilliant he has a lot of experiences in translation if you have time and Next, let's talk about Indonesian Certified Translator Ya, yang kita sebut dengan HPI atau Himpunan Penerjemah Indonesia Itu di negara kita Indonesia, we have HPI or Indonesian Translators Community or Association of Indonesian Translator Himpunan Penerjemah Indonesia How to register to be the part of the member of HPI? You can just go to click on the link below. Linknya ada di PowerPoint ya. It costs four hundred thousands, but for young translator, it costs a half of four hundred thousand, which is two hundred thousands rupiah. For being international certified translator, so if you are a member of HPI and then you want to register to be more international certificate certified translator, you can get the certificate to get some sort of accreditation or certification melalui ATA, ATA, the American Translators Association or Associations of American Translator, and then you 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 will get tested. To take language proficiency such as DLPT or Defense Language Proficiency Test, itu nama tesnya. And then after you get tested, you will get a certificate and then you can mark yourself as International Certified Translator. We talk about HPE. So in Indonesia, one, uh, I mean, if you are the member of HPE or, sorry, I repeat from previously so if you want to be indonesian sworn translator you should join 
or you should register to have a test. The name of the test is Test Certifikasi Nasional atau TSN. And that's the, the qualification of being an Indonesian translator uh, held by Lembaga Bahasa Internet Internasional atau LBI di Fakultas Ilmu Pengetahuan Budaya Universitas Indonesia. So Indonesia, so University of Indonesia always has a test, TSN, the Sertifikasi Nasional once a year, and it costs around satu juta ya, yeah, one million rupiah, not dollar. And if you want to have or if you want to know more about HPI, you can just Go to click on the Facebook, uh, join us on HPI Himpunan Perdendar Jemaah Indonesia before they accept you as the member of HPI in the Facebook. I talk in the Facebook, yeah. Uh, they will uh, give you a form of the question that you need to fulfill, like survey. And then if the team think like you are appropriate not appropriate but qualified to be the member of HPI they will confirm you but then if not yeah they will not confirm you so if you want to be the member of HPI in Facebook first you need to introduce yourself that you are a translator also you can go to link our website in Instagram Oh, we have an Instagram account. This is not the promotion, but this is just to give you a broad knowledge of how to be a translator by joining a community or the Association of Indonesian Translator. The name of our IG account is Himpunan Penerjema Indonesia. You can check on the PowerPoint that I have already shared to you, and then you can just follow. Also, to add or to improve your knowledge about translation, you can go to follow or to join some workshop, online seminar, webinar presented by HPI or Himpunan Penerjemah Indonesia. If you ha want to be the member of HPI um, officially, you will get a certificate. No, I mean you will get a card. This is the example of the card, Himpunan Penerjemah Indonesia, Association of Indonesian Translator, www.hpi.org.id or at secretariat at hpi.org.id. Kemudian, masa berlakunya selama 5 tahun ya, dan itu biayanya sangat murah, 400 ribu. Anda mendapatkan sertifikat. Jadi kayak promosi loh aku. So that's about the information of overall in the area of translation and let me know if you have question I will open for the discussion and question and that's it. Thank you for listening. Bye bye.